were shared at my jobs forum. And I continue, I'll continue to work on those ideas and other ideas and reach out so that we can grow our economy because the best way to solve our problems is through creating jobs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Minnesota, Mr. Paulson, for five minutes. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to congratulate the students at Oak Point Intermediate School in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, for collecting an impressive $42,474.24 for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's Pennies for Fa Patients program this year. That's more than any other school in the country. Every year, Mr. Speaker, elementary and secondary school students bring their spare change to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's Pennies for Patients program, uh, and they donate it as a part of that program to find a cure for leukemia, for lymphoma, and other blood cancers. Leukemia causes more deaths than any other cancer in children and young adults under the age of 20. Thanks to this program, schools across the country have been collecting important resources to fund valuable research and provide patient care. Programs like Pennies for Patients teach young students how they can impact the lives of their peers and the communities they live in. I am incredibly proud of the students at Oak Point for all their hard work and their service, and I congratulate them. I hope they have a great time at their much-deserved pizza party next week, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The chair recognizes a gentleman from Georgia, Dr. Brown, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the United States is the greatest nation ever in the history of mankind, a nation that many countries look to as a leader, a leader in strength, in security, in success. But, Mr. Speaker, we cannot lead from behind. We are behind on repaying our debts in a major way, all the while creating even more debt. Rather than focusing on raising the debt ceiling, Mr. Speaker, we should be putting all of our energy into reducing the debt. These overdue, overdue bills are bad for job creation and bad for our economy. As Admiral Mullen recently said, our debt is the de most dangerous threat to our national security. I could not agree anymore. If Congress continues to spend money as it has in the past, we will only become more reliant upon foreign countries to buy up our debt, making our economy secondary to theirs. It is dangerous. It is irresponsible. It is unforgivable. Mr. Speaker, this administration has taken our already weakened economy and turned it completely upside down, while allowing for the largest budget deficit in the history of the United States. The great cost of the stimulus bill, multiple government bailouts, and Obamacare have pushed our country over the edge. I beg of my colleagues to not let this great nation hit rock bottom. We cannot hit rock bottom before we make tackling the debt our first and foremost priority. Jobs, our economy, and our future depend upon it. Mr. Speaker, I yield back. The gentleman yields back. Pursuant to Clause 12A of Rule 1, the Chair declares the House in recess until 12 noon today. The House returns at noon Eastern to continue work on Homeland Security Department spending for 2012. The bill provides $42 billion for the next budget year.